Just four days back, a woman beggar was beaten to death by a mob. This happened in Gujarat, Ahmedabad. This woman was suspected of being a child lifter. It's the kind of story that Indians seem to be getting used to, especially over the past couple of years. Such instances have been growing with a growing access to social media. Fake news is taking lives in India on a daily basis now, yet there is no way to find an effective legal punishment for those who spread it. Our next story tells you why this, why fake news, is turning into a major internal security threat, one that needs to be constitutionally acknowledged as a crime so that we can find real ways of stopping it. About seven years ago, in India's information technology capital, Bengaluru, thousands of panic-stricken people of the northeast who were then living in the southern city were scrambling to get onto trains headed home. Because rumors had spread that they were going to be targets of violence. Around the same time, there were reports about a similar mass exodus from Hyderabad. Rumours that Assamese would be targeted if they failed to leave the city by Ramzan prompted them to pack off. Up until that time, that's what they were called, rumours. In retrospect, they were the first instances of a crime that can now only be termed as fake news. A phenomenal rise of internet and mobile penetration in leaps and bounds has given all the ammunition that was needed for the advancement of fake news. But the consequences have consistently become deadlier. By September 2015, the lynching of Muhammad Aklaq woke the country up to how lethal fake news can be. A clerk was lynched by his neighbours in Dadri district in the state of Uttar Pradesh. Rumour had it that he was storing beef in his house. Content shared via WhatsApp has led to murders time and again since then. According to a BBC report, at least 31 people were killed in the last two years as a result of mob attacks fueled by rumours on social media. And the problem has engulfed the length and breadth of the country. No region in India has been immune to the rise of this new age crime called fake news. From north to south, east to west, lives have been lost. And strangely, child trafficking has remained a common thread. In May 2017, eight people were lynched in the northern state of Jharkhand on the suspicion that they were part of a child-stealing gang. This was May 2018. A month later, in the northeastern state of Assam's Karbi Anglong district, two people were pulled out of their vehicles and beaten to death by a group of irate villagers who suspected them to be child lifters. On the 1st of July 2018, this time around the western state of Maharashtra, five tribals were lynched in Renpada village of Dhule district by a mob on the suspicion of child lifting. They were beaten to death with fists, feet, sticks and office furniture wielded by the raging mob and yet again because of false or fake information. Incidentally, Maharashtra is the state with the largest number of internet users in India. With over 460 million internet users, India is the second largest online market ranked only behind China. Some estimates say that more than 600 million people will be using the internet by the end of this year and the number is said to be driven by rapid internet growth in rural areas. And that essentially means fake news gets a larger and more invasive platform. If there are any hopes for catching up with it, then work to set up a legal framework against it needs to begin now. Bureau report beyond this one.